This is part two of our negotiation class, vocabulary, and this is preparing goals. So we're going to look at the vocabulary all related to helping you prepare your goals. Remember, preparing goals is really a key part of negotiation. There's really no way to know have you done a good job or a poor job if you don't have clear goals. So let's go ahead and look at some of the vocabulary we often use in preparing goals. The first one is accept. Of course, accept meaning that you can accept the proposal or you can accept the terms or you can accept the price. So something is okay. So we would often use this by just saying, I accept your terms or I accept your price. Or you could say, I do not accept your price. You might think reject would be a way to say it, but you often in negotiations just say, we cannot accept that. Meaning, we would like to, but we can't. We cannot accept it. Whereas reject, reject sounds much more negative and like there's something you really hate or don't like about it. Do not accept or cannot accept just means I'd like to, but we just can't. It doesn't work. Okay, assume. The word assume here, meaning that you assume something is true, you take it for granted, you think it's true even though it may not be true. And this is often a word you can use when, when you're talking about the other side and they assume something is true. So you can say, well, you assume that our production cost is $10 per unit, but actually our production cost is $12 per unit. You cannot assume that. You cannot think that's true because it might not be true. So this assume can be used in many ways, but I think here we're saying that you need to be careful. Don't assume anything about the other side. And in your negotiation, you can use this word assume to tell the other side that they're wrong about something. Don't assume that that's true. You can tell them that. Benefit. Of course, a benefit is something that helps you, something that's good. It is a benefit. So when you do a negotiation, when you're involved in negotiation, of course, you want to look for your best benefits. You want to look for benefits. And you might also be considering explaining to the other side what are the benefits they can get from you. So while they maybe they want to have a low price, maybe they also can consider some other benefits, not just low price. So you may explain to them, we cannot give you a lower price, but we have other benefits we can give you. For example, we can give you our brand new product first before other buyers. So that's a great benefit for you. So benefit is a really great word to be using. Brainstorming, of course, is a very popular idea where we brainstorm, we think of things anything, even crazy ideas. And this will be very useful in your negotiation, of course, because this is a behavior you probably want to try when you're preparing for your negotiation, when you're getting ready, when you're thinking of the strategies, when you're thinking of how you're going to approach it. Maybe you need to get with your team and, and brainstorm a little bit about the negotiation. So some crazy ideas maybe are okay, you don't criticize, and maybe you come up with an idea that's a little bit crazy but really good at the end after you brainstorm a bit. Compensation. Compensation is payment for something that has been done, some work that is completed. Now compensation can be used in many ways. It's a little bit like benefit. Only compensation is a bit more clear and that is saying you do A and I give you B. So you come and wash my car and I pay you uh, 10 US dollars for washing my car. So I do something, I get something. I do something for you, you give me something. This is compensation idea. But in negotiation, we can use it much wider, meaning that I can compensate you for sacrificing something now. So if you can give me a faster shipping time, I can compensate you later by giving you a different benefit. So compensation usually is a one-to-one uh, -one relationship, but it also can be a bit more general, saying, in general, you do something good for me and I'll compensate you. So that compensation, what is it, that noun? What is the compensation I get for helping you now? Competitor, of course, a competitor is the company that you're working against or that you're competing with inside the marketplace. 
So usually your competitor would be another company that's selling a similar product or a different product but to the same customers you are that may replace your product or if customers buy that product they don't buy your product so that's a competitor. So of course competitors are uh, used in your negotiation because you often talk about competitors. Now you can talk about competitors in many ways but one of the most effective ways is if I'm a buyer and you're a seller, I can tell you directly. I don't have to buy from you. I can buy from someone else. I can buy from your competitor. So a competitor is very clearly someone, another company, that I can use against you. Even though I maybe not have done that, maybe I'm not serious to do that, but I can say I'm going to do that. So a competitor is very effective that way. Consider meaning think about. Now, this is a really great word. It's a word that's a very simple word, right? But we use this often in our negotiation because we want to emphasize that we are going to consider your proposal. And it's very important in a negotiation that you let the other side feel that you're listening to them. And one way to listen is to say this, consider. We will consider your offer. We have already considered your offer very carefully, but we cannot accept it. Right? So this is not always saying we do something positive or we do something negative. Consider. You're going to think about it. A great word to use in your negotiation to make the other side feel comfortable and respected. Convince. Of course, convince meaning that you're going to, in a way, help the other side to believe that what you're saying is true. So this convince is kind of the opposite of assume in a way in a negotiation because you're not assuming it's true, you're convincing them it's true. You're going to go ahead and explain it to them why it's true. So in your negotiation you can use this word very effectively by saying it straightforward and saying I'm going to try to convince you that this is a great deal. Are you convinced yet? I'm going to convince you that this is a really good opportunity. So it's a very positive that way. And you can go ahead then and try to convince the other side. And you can ask them, are you convinced yet? Now, of course, if they're smart, they're always going to say, well, we're not really convinced yet. And then you can say, well, we can try another thing to convince you. How about if I give you a discount on the shipping terms? Does that convince you? So that's a great word to use. Cooperate. Of course, cooperate meaning work together. And when you work together, you cooperate. In negotiation, we're already cooperating in a way because we're negotiating. Remember, for negotiation to happen, you have to have at least two sides. If there's no cooperation, then the negotiation breaks down and there will be no negotiation. So there is always some level of cooperation. You may cooperate more, meaning you work together better, or less, meaning that you really it's really tough to work things out. In our negotiation RPGs, you may find that there are other groups you are easy to cooperate with. You have a good relationship with them. Maybe that's good to seek them out often so you can cooperate and help each other. That's perfectly normal. Delay. Delay here meaning to put off to another time. Delay is really important in negotiation because it's a kind of tactic where you can specifically say that, well, your offer is something we're going to consider very carefully, but we cannot decide now. And the other side may say, well, we need you to decide now because we have other things to do or we have other buyers waiting or we have other sellers we need to talk to. And you say, well, we're going to wait until tomorrow or I can't decide I need to talk to my boss that's a delay so usually this word is a kind of a tactic or a strategy in some cases an overall strategy that you're going to take your time so delay is not something you would often say but it's something you can say inside your team let's make sure we delay as long as possible would be a normal thing to say inside your team. You would not say that to the other side though because the other side you want to tell them, oh I'm working as fast as I can. We really, this is the fastest we can go. At my company everything takes two days so I'm sorry. But then you come back to your team and on the team you say, I'm trying to delay. Delivery. 
Delivery, of course, is the product is shipped and they receive it. So it's usually from the seller to the buyer and the buyer will take delivery. So delivery. Now, we use this often in negotiation because we're often talking about shipping a product, sending a product, or even a service, delivering a service. So this could be a verb, delivering a service, but here we're using it as a noun because we often talk about it. When can the delivery take place? When can you take delivery? When would you like delivery? We need to have delivery at the shortest possible time. So delivery is often related to that delivery time. Emphasize. Emphasize meaning something is very important, so you're going to emphasize it. And in your negotiation, you can say this word right out. You can say it. I need to emphasize to you. Or I want to emphasize to you that quality is very important to our customers. I will emphasize this point. So this is a word you can often use, and it's very helpful because it lets the other side see what's important to you. You emphasize what's important. Expense. Expense is the cost or the amount of money or some other kind of value that you need to spend. And this cost can be fixed or variable. So this expense can need many things. Now how do you use this in your negotiation? When you're negotiation, it's a great word because if you're the buyer, of course, you always want to tell the other side, I have many expenses in marketing, for example. I cannot afford to pay that much for your product. At the same time, the seller can say something very similar. Uh, we would love to sell to you at a lower price, but our expenses of production make it impossible. We cannot sell this for less than it costs to manufacture. So expense is a word that's used by both sides very often in the negotiation. Fall back. Fall back is a position or, an, or a plan where you don't have your main plan work out very well, so you use your backup plan or your fallback plan. So it's kind of a backup idea or a backup plan. Now, in negotiation, we can have many fallbacks. We can have prices, we can have shipping, we can have quality, we can have different kinds of deal packages. So fallback is not necessarily just a plan, but it's related to your planning, right? So when you're making your planning, you need to think with your team. What's our first position? What's the thing we want the most? But if that doesn't work, what's the thing we want next? And then if that doesn't work, what's the thing we want next? And by that way, we have a fallback, maybe two fallbacks. So fallback. What's the fallback plan? Forecast. Now forecast is uh, something about the future, right? It's telling something about the future. Why would we use forecast? Because of course when we're making a negotiation, when we're in a negotiation, when we're negotiating, we're trying to buy or sell a product. And it's not happening now, it's happening in the future, of course, it's not now. So we're always talking about the future. So in the future, something's going to happen. So for example, if I'm selling a product and I'm selling this product to you, I want you to believe that this product I'm selling to you is going to be very successful. You are going to make a lot of money. You are going to sell a lot. I'm going to sell it to you and you're going to sell it to other customers, your customers. So I need to give you a kind of idea. What about the future? I can forecast. So I can tell you, we have forecasts, or we have done some research, and our forecasts show, or I can forecast, or I forecast. It can be a noun or a verb, however you want to use it, but the point is, it's the future. We forecast that this product is going to be very successful in the market. You are going to make a lot of money, so you should be happy to take the deal we're going to offer you. So forecast is all about the future. Give in. Now it's a little bit like give up. Right? And, and it is similar, it's idea, give in. Give in means that you agree to the other side. Not everything. Now you could give in totally, and that would be, we give in totally. We give everything you want, we agree. But usually give in means one or two points. So you would give in to one point. You would say, well, we can give in on this one point. We can give in on price, but we cannot give in on anything else. Well, we can give in on price, but we cannot give in on shipping terms. These shipping terms must be this way. So give in. And it's a way to sound positive 
about giving something up rather than sounding negative, which of course would be worse. Goal. Now goal is a really key word because it's a key concept. It's very important to set our goals at the beginning before we begin our negotiation. Now usually you would not say this in the negotiation because you do not want to tell the other side your goals. Remember, your information is secret. It's important to keep your goals secret. You for sure do not want to tell your goals to the other side. Unless it's a special kind of negotiation, which we're going to talk about later, where things are very honest and open. Very, very rare, I think. Usually you want to keep your goals very secret. So the goals, this word is a word you would use inside your team. What are our goals for this negotiation? Implication. So the word implication means that something will happen because something else happened. What's the implication? It's like a relationship. So let's just say that you have a test tomorrow and you do not study. You rather, uh, rather you go play some video games. Well, the implication of playing video games at night before a test is you will fail your test. That's the implication. So A leads to B. That's the implication. So we can use this in our negotiation, of course, to try to infer that if one side does something, the other side will do something in return. That's that kind of implication, creating a relationship. You can use it positive or negative. You could be very negative, too. For example, um, you could say something like, if you don't buy from us now, the implication is you will not receive any of our new products in the future. And this makes it sound kind of objective or not so personal, but it is very negative nonetheless. And it could be, again, it could be positive or negative. Persuasive. Persuasive meaning that you convince someone that something is true, even though it may not be true or it may be true. It's just that you're good at that persuasion. So persuasive meaning you can convince them. Of course, when we negotiate, we want to be persuasive. We want the things we say the other side to believe. So on your team, maybe it's important that you look on your team and think, who are the people on your team that are persuasive? And those should be the people, the key people you send out to negotiate or maybe to make some initial offers if they're very persuasive people. That's very important. Postpone is a lot like the other word delay. Postpone means to put something off until a later time. In this case, we use it as a verb and specifically in the negotiation, we can say something like, we need to postpone this negotiation, or we need to postpone this decision, meaning that we're going to change the time to a later time when we make the decision, postpone. You can also say we're gonna postpone the, the shipping. We're gonna postpone the whole negotiation. Anything is possible, just another time, a later time. Usually you would give a, t a date or a time. We're going to postpone this negotiation until tomorrow morning. That's the normal way to use it. We're going to postpone this negotiation until Monday because it's a weekend or it's going to be a long weekend, so let's end now, we'll postpone until Monday. It's not necessarily negative. Predict, of course, like prediction means you can tell something about the future and it's the same idea here, only a verb. We predict this product will be very successful in the marketplace. Put off, again, this idea of delaying or, or postponing. So we're going to put off our decision until tomorrow morning. We need to put off this negotiation until Monday morning. You could also use it the other way. You could ask someone, can you please not put off your decision any longer? Can you please make sure you do not put off this decision until after New Year's? We need the decision before New Year's, so you can use it this way. Reject means to refuse, and usually this would be about a specific offer. So you make an offer and I will reject your offer. Now it sounds very negative, doesn't it? But a negotiation is very normal. You just say, uh, we cannot accept this offer, or you just say, we reject this offer. Or you can say something a little bit more friendly sounding, like, 
we reject this offer at this price, meaning we want a different price. Or you could say we reject this offer as it is, but if you can modify it, we can consider it again. So in negotiation, when you're talking with the other side, when you're talking with the other team, the word reject is not super negative. It's pretty normal inside the negotiation. Renegotiate, meaning to negotiate all over again. And why would you need to renegotiate? Re because there's something that you disagree with the other side or they disagree with you. Or it's possible that there are many parts of the negotiation, the price and the shipping and the quality and the quantity, and it's become very confusing. You can say, well, this is, we're just going to begin again. We're going to renegotiate the whole thing. Or you could say, we agree with everything except the shipping terms. We must renegotiate the shipping terms. Or you could say, we agree with this package except for the price. We must renegotiate the price. So it just means that you already had some kind of negotiation. Maybe you agreed on something, but now you're going to start over on that part. Stress. Stress here means to put an emphasis or say something is very important. And this is a great word to use in your negotiation because you'll say something like this. I want to stress. I want to stress or I must stress. I must stress that quality is the most important thing in this deal. I must stress to you that quality is the most important aspect of a product to our customers. I must stress. I stress to you. So it's to make it very important. Very great word to use inside your negotiation because it's telling the other side what's important to you. Submit. Submit usually is very straightforward. It's saying that I'm going to give you a proposal or even just one little piece of an overall proposal. I would like to submit to you a new price. I would like to submit to you this deal package. I would like to submit to you this offer. I would like to submit, a give to you, to give it to you. Suggest. Suggest meaning to give an idea or a small idea. And we can use this in the negotiation very often when you're trying to help the other side. How to say this? Help the other side to help you. So what you're saying is maybe we're having a good negotiation. Maybe things go smoothly, but there's a few points that are not working out. So I can say to you, may I suggest or I would like to suggest to you. I would like to suggest to you that you really be careful about the quality of this product because we that's most important to us. So I need to suggest this to you. Now you know that and when you talk to me, you're going to remember that. So this idea suggests is a great word to use in your negotiation. It's a great way to let the other side know something and it sounds very friendly. Test. Now of course test is not a word you use in your negotiation. It's something that you do, right? So testing the other side. We often do this in our negotiation. You're, in the negotiation, you're trying to understand what are the secrets of the other side. What, are their, uh, what is their secret information? So you test by offering a higher price or offering lower quality or offering slower or faster shipping and you see how do they react. Remember, in the negotiation, it's not just a one-time thing. You do not just sit down once and it's all over. And in our RPG simulation, it's not that way. It's going to be over time. You can negotiate with one group and not have a decision. And you can negotiate with another group and then go back to the first group. You could negotiate with a group and even make a deal and then cancel the deal as long as it's before the time deadline is over, the time frame. So this idea of testing is very important to figure out what's possible in the negotiation. Threaten. Now threaten is also again like test. It's something you do in your negotiation. And threaten, we often think of threatening as violence. I'm going to kill you. That's threatening. But here threaten just means that you're going to give the other side some kind of pressure. What kind of pressure do you give in a negotiation? Well, some of the pressure you can give is, for example, I'm not going to make a deal with you, I'll make a deal with someone else. That's that competition, right? Unless you make a deal now. That's a threat. That's a threat. Or you could be very specific. If you do not agree to the $10 price, 
then we will never make this offer to you again. Or in the future, we will always make our offer to someone else first. That's a threat. That's a pretty serious threat. Sometimes the threat is very simple. If you don't agree now, we cannot promise that we can make the same offer later. In other words, I'm giving you this offer now, this price, this package, this, this whole bundle. I'm giving this to you now. But 10 minutes from now, I don't know. Maybe I cannot give it to you because I'm going to go make a deal with somebody else. So in that case, that's a threat. It's a threat. Now, it's not a horrible threat. It's not like I'm going to kill you threat, but that's how we do threat in negotiation. Withdraw. Withdraw means to leave a negotiation, give up on a negotiation, just close a negotiation. It's important to remember in your negotiation, there's no rule that says you must always negotiate. It's possible that you talk with different teams, in this case our RPG, our teams, different companies, and you cannot find a deal that's good for you. If you cannot find a deal that's good for you, then you can withdraw, you leave. Or in one negotiation, you get all the way to the end and you say, uh, we're going to withdraw. We're going to withdraw from this negotiation. And then you find another group. Or maybe you have two groups and you've promised them both something. And they don't know that you promised the other group. Well, obviously, one is going to execute and one is not going to execute. So you need to withdraw from one. That's fine. That makes sense. And you can just say that. We withdraw from this negotiation. Okay, that's all for part two.